Hello students, we're back. Again, this is another quick video. This is for the trimester fours. Uh, this is the current um, setup of classes. I'm just going to run through some of the tips and tricks and kind of how to go through these classes as well as um, looking at my notes that I have available um, for all of you uh, and how best to sort of use those and go through those. Okay, so the classes that are going to be on your schedule you're going to be having AAT, AAT2, which is comparable to the, the diversified classes um, within. I have material from both of these, where you guys have your lab guide, um, as well as some of your PowerPoints. I included all of my, my diversified 2 uh, material, which included within here, you're also going to find a whole bunch of different um, setups uh, for adjustments how to, uh, not only how to set up with those, but all of the different contact points, segmental contact point, and all of that general information, uh, line of drive, all that sort of good stuff that is in there um, that you can use to learn more adjustments. Um, like down in here, there is uh, rib setups, which are really, 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 really good to learn. Uh, we don't spend a lot of time with those in school, but I highly recommend looking at those. Clinical nutrition, so I had a different structure, instructor for clinical nutrition than what you will currently have. However, the material overall in general is still the exact same. I've included all of my clinical nutrition information as well as the new information that has been uh, provided. For this class, I highly recommend that you slow down a little bit and watch the um, videos. Um, the lecture recordings and stuff that the teacher will do. Um, a lot of this class is going to be, um, to be honest, is a lot of it's kind of memorization. Um, biochem, especially with the vitamins and the minerals, all sort of comes back from knowing the different sources of those vitamins and minerals, as well as sort of their, their function in the body and why they are important. Um, this is a really good class. I would highly recommend um, either finding or making Quizlets just to practice the information over and over and over again, uh, which is the mo one of the most helpful ways to learn this material. Diagnostic Imaging 2. Um, pretty soon this will be changing to Clinical Imaging. Um, Diagnostic Imaging 2 is a class. You have quite a bit of material within this class. <clears throat> um, hopefully it is still DXI2 and not Clinical Imaging. If it's Clinical Imaging, I will um, remake a chunk for just for this class, how to study for it. So the key to all of your diagnostic imaging classes or clinical imaging classes is going to be repetition. Um, repetition as well as learning how to really break down and process the information that you see in an x-ray. Um, <clears throat> in an x-ray, in an MRI, and in a CT. So Within some of the notes as well, you can go into Google to find this, um, or also in previous courses, you should have gone, you should have seen normal uh, x-rays. Normal x-rays, normal MRI is kind of what that normal is. And here even we have another PowerPoint um, that will show us those normal x-rays. So this is one of the... I think one of the best ways to learn this material and to start to identify these things is first and foremost to follow a pattern um, within it and also to recognize how it's supposed to look normally. So looking here at this cervical spine X cervical spine MRI, we want to look first of all identifying, okay, is this a type 1 or a type 2 weighted image? Remembering type 2 H2O and the type 2 water is going to be bright. So in this case, all of this fluid, more likely I'm fairly certain that this is going to be a type 2 x-ray. So looking at it, looking at this is a normal view. So come in here and look through and identify all the different structures. We can see the pons, the medulla, the cerebellum. Here is the spinal cord as well as in the spinal canal. You can see the spinous processes. Um, the nuchal ligament running here through the back, the sub-Q fat, as well as then their anterior tubercle here coming up. There is the dens of C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, uh, C8, T1, sorry, C7, T1. Um, we will have C8 nerve root, 
which you can see later on as you go through with the different exiting nerve roots. Um, you'll be able to see C1 through C8 nerve roots. Um, you can see the disc spaces and roughly how much space there is. These are all going to be your normal views and how you're, what you're going to see on those normals. If you know the normals really, really well, I spend, if you spend more time looking at what is normal, when something is abnormal, uh, you're, it's much easier to pick up and to identify. So make sure that you always have these available to compare to um, whenever you're looking at something abnormal. And that will be a really, really big help with that. Also, here within this, I'm not going to show this whole thing, but this is a chart that I have um, that I produced for all of the different, many of the different lesions that we, um, almost all of them except for the last little bit, um, where personally, just with, with how much the, the course load was towards the end of the trimester, I didn't have um, enough time to to completely finish this out through all of the lesions. However, um, the first, uh, I believe the first three units um, I did, so exam, f like exam four, this one I did not quite finish all the way out. There's a couple things that are, that are missing there and the gener degenerative diseases and stuff. So, but here, um, best way to study for this class, know the conditions themselves, know the names of the conditions, ages, are huge. If you know the age range of the condition, that's going to help you a ton because almost every single question that you're going to be asked, it will give you an age and a lot of the times the age will immediately differentiate, especially with multiple choice questions. It'll knock you down to one or to one or two choices. Most common locations, great thing to know, um, especially if she mentions it in one of her lectures, um, specifically saying this is the most common location, know that. Um, symptomatology, some of the general like main symptoms, especially if it comes with, with pain and when there is pain, I have some of them, like the big ones that we talk about, uh, highlighted, you want to know. Radiographic features, the most common radiographic features, some of the different um, signs and all that sort of stuff. If she mentions, mentions a specific sign, make sure you look at images of that sign and she'll have all of that included in your PowerPoints. Uh, potential differentials, you'll learn um, as you go through those, especially like alphabet soup is a really good differential, phegnomashic for a lot of the um, osteolytic geographic lesions, and that sort of stuff as you get more into those materials. Lab tests, um, this will be another thing you want to really focus on, uh, mostly um, for conditions like multiple myeloma. Referral. Nine times out of ten, it's going to either be PCP or an orthopedic referral. I'm just knowing the difference um, between those and when to use to to um, refer to what. Finally, further imaging. If you're unsure, guess MRI, and then also looking at the chiro care, whether it is contraindicated or not. The main idea here that you want to look at is. Is this, con is this a condition, um, it's basically is this malignant or is it benign and um, or would adjusting this cause more issues um, than the patient already has. You don't want to necessarily memorize all of this, but if you understand the condition itself um, as well as its symptomatology and kind of what it is doing to the bone um, or to, to the bone or to the soft tissue structures, you can start to infer about the chiro care. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of information here. Highly recommend spending a lot of time in this chart and comparing it with um, different radiographs. Again, this is repetition, repetition, repetition. Oh, let me get back to where we were. Okay, ESAT, uh, these, this class has changed. It is split into two. So with ESAT, especially the lower extremity, really focus on learning these adjustments. Um, all, there are a lot of people when they get to clinic that do not know how to adjust extremities and honestly um, practicing these setups and these palpations and how these joints are supposed to feel you can make a really really big difference in a patient's life by doing this. Um, I had gone said it required in this try. Um, <clears throat> I have that available in my elective courses. Uh, if you want to go and, and check that out, I highly recommend looking at Gonset and looking at Thompson as a lot of those listings and those type of, types of adjustments will pop up 
on part four, uh, part three and part four board exams. Uh, two, three, and four, I believe. Neuroscience. You guys have a new instructor for neuroscience, Dr. Dishman. He is absolutely amazing. So a lot of this material is not going to fall exactly with um, what you'll be seeing. However, with neuroscience, you can use a lot of this as supplemental because um, they should. You will still have the same objectives, so you can go through these and see additional information as well as the reviews um, that I have and some of the drawings that I personally have done to identify the structures. If you need any additional help with neuroscience, the I will uh, point you especially to Ninja Nerd on YouTube. He is phenomenal and you can see so actually if you can go ninja nerd neurology I've watched a good percentage of these videos but he goes through a whole bunch of the uh, anatomy and the dissection um, of the, the models and stuff as well as then going into the individual neuron glial cells everything that you can see you want for neurology he has all of it here. He does an amazing job of explaining. Um, I would highly recommend even just throwing this on in the background sometimes, um, or if you yeah, just throw it on your TV before you, um, while you're cleaning the house or something, because you will learn a lot from going through all of this information. And Dr. Dishman is an amazing instructor as well. I'm currently in the neuro, uh, neurology masters, clinical neurology masters with him. Um, so make sure you take your time to learn neurology. Um, doing well in neuroscience will help you a lot um, in clinical neurology as well as classes down the line. So two of the more challenging classes, so three, the three most challenging classes are DXI3, Physical Diagnosis, and Systems Pathology. Physical Diagnosis, there is a lot of information in this course, but learning this information will make you a phenomenal um, doctor that can diagnose conditions accurately to get the best treatment possible, or to give the best treatment possible. So within each of my PowerPoints, um, I have added a lot of the information that he says um, in his videos that were not on the slides, as well as a lot of definitions. This is really going to be where kind of your medical definition slash terminology type feeling, or type material, is really gonna come into play. There's a lot of new words. Um, a lot of different disease conditions and a lot of little things that you really want to pay attention to. So I'd highly recommend looking at all those words. If any time that you go through, you're going through a lecture um, and you do not see and you do not understand any of the individual words, um, you will want to make sure you pause, stop, and take some time to go through it to be able to understand. So here, like, all everything that's here in green, you'll see I like to... Um, italicize and change different colors to give actual specific definitions of exactly what these conditions mean um, and how that they are affecting the body as well as doing some like highlighting and other uh, changes. So you see some slides have more than others um, just depending on the material and how I felt with it. So this is a really good idea. Add as much as you can um, to these slides as you go through them. The, the most important part of this class is actually going to be more in the lab, which is why I give you these these lab, the rubrics. Um, the rubrics themselves um, are very, very light, are completely laid out with exactly what it is that you need to say. Um, I'll show you just an example of what I have done. So when I practice these, I wrote, I took the rubric themselves and wrote out every single thing and wrote what I would state exactly in order and I would practice and time myself. So starting, for example, blood pressure, be able to take it in under two minutes. The upper extremity, this chunk, should take 30 seconds. So I would start here, repeat it um, from memory, miming it out. I'd have my table set up, I would just mime it out or actually mime it on somebody. Um, and I would do this over and over and over again until I felt comfortable going through the whole way through and under the time limit that I had set. Then I would continue. So I'd start back here at the beginning, perform the, this upper extremity portion, 
and then add the lower extremity. Do the lower extremity portion two or three times, and then start back from the beginning, and run it all the way through. Do that over and over and over again, all the way through from the beginning, all the way, until you get to all the way to the very bottom. And you can even have, if you have a th third person, um, one person um, you one person will perform it, one person will be the patient, and then the third person can, person can follow along with the rubric, making sure that you go in order. Uh, going in order just really helps the instructor grade um, so that you don't miss any of your points. By doing it this way, I got a 99% on the first uh, lab exam and a 98% on the second one. So doing this method really, really helps, especially because everything's already um, written out with, and you can add and change some of the like, conditions and stuff that I put in here if you prefer other conditions or if the teacher instructs otherwise. Um, big tip, practice these ahead of time. You will have a formative practical, um, which will kind of force you to practice these, uh, but you'll really, really want to get ahead of the game. And as soon as you start learning these exams, I believe the heart, uh, either the heart or the lung is one of the first ones that you learn and you really want to get ahead and begin practicing these as soon as you possibly can. Sorry, give me one, one moment. Grad life with a, with a newborn baby, it's exciting. Um, Any time as well that you have to go through um, and making lists of the different pathologies and kind of their main characteristics is really good to know. So knowing where the pain is located um, and what your potential options are as far as what we have learned. Um, doing something like this for all of the different systems, again, would really good recommendation um, to master those materials and that will help you a lot um, in try five and try six, especially try six, when you get into classes like differential diagnosis and you really start putting all those pieces together. Systems pathology. Okay, so this class is a doozy of a class. There's a ton of information. Um, you're going to be having all sorts, you're gonna have tons and tons of material here um, that you really want to spend quite a bit of time here. Dr. Perryman, He's an amazing teacher, I absolutely love him. He is an incredibly fast talker, which is why I think these notes specifically are probably my most valuable um, that I have ever made. I took the time, you have five hours of week of per week of lecture material, and everything that you see that's in different colors are things that I have added, things that he could potentially test on. I will say, if you did not internalize and really know physiology one and physiology two material especially things um, in the first chunk like the pituitary gland this class is going to be a bit of a struggle for you I highly recommend that you spend quite a bit of time so here I didn't quite change the color but it's italicized but I would highly recommend that you spend time reviewing your physiology two material on the pituitary gland and get help with this material if you are struggling with it right at the get-go. There is too much of it to try and catch up on, so make sure that you um, maintain this class in the front most burner that you can to get through all of the material through it. So like this first unit is over 22 is 22 plus pages of of stuff. This is just the first unit. And there's also, there's a whole other one um, as plus additional PowerPoints for all of these conditions. So do not fall behind in this class. Use this, these notes. Um, the best way to look at these um, is try and pick out main ideas. Go through and going through the material, pick out the big things that are different between each condition um, that will differentiate it. Like, so like mechanism of injury um, for a lot of these different like strain versus sprain like what is it that is injured how is that going to present um, sort of the, the grading of it how is that going to feel is there going to be just a little bit of laxity or a whole bunch of laxity will there be pain with it um, that sort of stuff um, as then with the other medical conditions like the endocrine system um, if there's a laundry list of 
um, complications and a laundry list of maybe um, symptoms, pick those top three or four that he'll mention are like, these are indicative of this condition, like Cushing's disease. For example, Alexa, stop. Cushing's disease. Um, you're going to have the purple striae on the abdomen. You're going to have centripetal obesity. You're going to have thinning of the um, extremities. You're going to have potentially have a buffalo hump, have a moon face, those sort of things. Um, then you look at Addison's disease, where you're going to have things like um, tanner skin. You're going to have um, hyperpigmentation of like the hands, that sort of stuff. Um, hair loss. So if you look and focus on those those big um, key factors, those are the sort of things that he's going to ask questions on. Um, as well with all of these classes, take advantage of the quizzes. Um, take your time on the quizzes when they give you the time. Go back and ask questions. If you get things wrong on these quizzes, um, reach out to the teachers and ask to go over the questions that you missed and understand why it is that you missed them because that was going to be really, really important because in all of these classes, a lot of the questions that you get quizzed on are going to reappear on the test, either very, very similar questions or almost identical questions. So those are all of my tips and tricks. I went a little bit longer than I anticipated, but try four is a hefty try. Um, just keep up with it. Work hard, study hard, and enjoy yourselves. Have a good one. Bye.